I have a vision of a highest quality education available to the sons and daughters of farmers and factory workers and fishermen, people, the extraordinary, ordinary people of, of, of this state. And I believe that the University of Rhode Island can be the standard against which public higher education in this country will someday be made. He leads people to learn as he learns, so it's, it's really remarkable, I think. If you were to go around Rhode Island, you go around the country, and you talk to URI alumni, to a person, they're going to say, this place is a much better place than it was 18 years ago. And as an alum, I have much greater pride in my alma mater than I had 18 years ago. And that's a real tribute to his leadership. His honesty, uh, almost to a fault, uh, looking straight at you, telling you exactly how he feels. What you see is what you get. Everybody that worked with him developed res this respect for the man. We would follow him anywhere. If there was a fight to fight because of where he thought the school should go and um, where the university should be, he would fight it. When he was in elementary school, there was a young boy, Donnie he was called, who was kind of half, kind of big and, and not as much intelligence as you'd wish somebody to have. And the kids all picked on him, you know how they do. So he was always standing up for Johnny and he would fight the other kids because they were, they made fun of him, you know. But he has an unyielding and strong commitment to the underprivileged and to the underdog. And I admire and respect that quality of him. It was his mission to reach out to those who were mostly in need and to see if he could at least stem the tide of um, providing quality education so that these youngsters would have sellable skills in the market. He's respectful of every person that comes before him and has come to this university. Um, it's what really has branded him in many respects, uh, which will be his legacy, is one of respect for all people, no matter where you come from. Bob's most important contribution, as I experienced it, was to change our culture. Uh, we were a university that was plagued with a sense of inferiority. And what Bob was able to do was to really communicate that this was a place where we could do great things. He can make you understand the most difficult of concepts and draw you right into the fold at the same time and make you want to stand up and make this happen. He's a very persuasive, dynamic, at times emotional speaker and can appeal to very, very broad audiences by uh, that particular talent uh, that, that he has. Like other uh, strong leaders I've seen, uh, he's able to listen to people and, and to really make them feel as though their point of view is, is um, um, actually worthwhile. So he's a guy that's built hope here, and, and, and that's maybe an essential characteristic that will need to exist in the next president. I'd like to start with integrity. And I think he's a straight shooter. Uh, I've never heard a whisper contrary. I trust the man. He often sees uh, the issue in the corner that other people aren't focusing on and brings it back into the center. He's a cerebral guy. You know, he's a very cerebral guy. There's no question about it. But he's also profoundly, profoundly emotional. Well, the word was out that I had been kidnapped in Colombia. And some of the people who uh, had planned to come and agreed uh, had second thoughts and even third thoughts and decided not to come. Sure enough, he got a phone call giving us his schedule and when he was going to arrive. He showed up. His passion for the university is probably what allowed him to, to be successful over a long period of time and to accomplish a lot of things 
in uh, some very difficult times. Bob Crothers is a man with big ideas and a big heart. And when someone has those two qualities, people follow without being led. Well, from, if, you, if you look at the University of Rhode Island in 1990 and compare it now, it's looked like a different place. Uh, it has really grown not only in terms of buildings, but also in terms of its, well, its splendor. I mean, it looks like a first-rate flagship institution. He had to create the burning platform here. And uh, he did it and, and then built it back up. Well, Bob came advertised as a, as a poet, a lawyer, and a fisherman with a sense of humor. So uh, I figured that uh, he was going to need those latter attributes to serving as president of the University of Rhode Island. But every now and then, even Bob will lose a pretty good fish. And, and, and when he does, I, I hear some of his poetry coming from the front of the boat. Some pretty earthy poetry, I might add. Uh, he used to have a boat, and we'd go on his boat up in Wickford, and we would go out into the bay, fish, and he would, he would love it. He'd have so much fun. You're a great fisherman, too. He's great at everything he does. Bob's dad died about a decade ago, maybe a couple more years than that. And uh, there is a story there I, I, I wouldn't mind sharing. I don't think Bob would mind knowing that at his dad's funeral, Bob uh, put a, 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 a yellow Mr. Twister, little plastic lure in his dad's jacket pocket. And he said, Dad, that'll catch fish anywhere. About friendship, Herman Melville wrote, Friendship at first sight, like love at first sight, is but the single truth. And indeed, our friendship has been one of the steady truths in my life. Not a bad journey for a couple of rough and tumble guys from the backwoods and steel mills of western Pennsylvania, wouldn't you say? It was a moment when I saw him very quietly, without any hoopla, and when nobody was watching, go forward when the students drowned. What so impressed me about him was the fact that he was there, along with Tom Dugan, um, waiting with the parents, talking to the parents, spending time with those people, helping them to live through those moments of waiting to see would these kids be found. Uh, I, was, I was in a wheelchair and uh, Bob and I had to meet with the College of Business Administration's Advisory Council early in the morning. And uh, Rhonda was pushing the wheelchair and he came up and he said, I'll take it from here. And he took the wheelchair and was pushing me across the quadrangle. I became very emotional that thought that the president of the university was pushing me in a wheelchair. and I teared up and uh, I said to him I, I, I don't think I can do this and he, he just looked at me and said uh, get a grip you can make it and I cleaned that story up by the way he's a good dad he's fun he's caring he loves me he definitely loves me to death Bob was moving up and down the windows, down on his knees, cheering, clapping, sometimes swearing, and uh, he was truly into the game. He was out there cheering like any freshman or undergraduate would be doing. And Bob Brothers always thought he was a decent basketball player, which of course he wasn't. But uh, so we're running raggedly through, uh, back and forth, and uh, I had played basketball there, and I went to the foul and I sank a foul shot. I was too amazing that I did that. But then I had an uncontested layup, and he was on the other team, and suddenly he blindsided me, and I, and I, I couldn't believe it. He, I fell on the floor. He was acting like Teddy Bruschi from the, the Patriots, you know? And so I remembered him for the next two weeks because I had a pain in my side that entire time. 
My funny moment uh, in reflecting on my, my years of knowing President Carruthers was the year that he uh, was the mystery guest at the Providence Journal Follies. Anything said here tonight that bears resemblance to any character living and dead is purely coincidental. If it hurt your feelings, offer it up. Now go in peace. Ite Mise East. Pax Vobiscum. Go Rody. You betcha. Now we had a celebration in the Rams Den where, uh, uh, among other things, uh, they played the music to the Macarena. It was not a pretty scene. He's a great person to have as a friend. So cute, isn't he? <laughs> He's just so cute. You know, how does everybody not fall in love with him? Lucky, lucky. He's an amazing mentor, and uh, he really uh, he really knows that that's an important role that he has to play. Many many leaders don't know that. I'm, I may be uh, in some state of mind going into his office, and I'll leave his office feeling so much better just because um, the advice that he shared with me. I owe any future success that I will ever have in my life to Robert Carruthers, <laughs> and that's the truth. President Carruthers, thank you for what you've done for our university. Thank you for everything you've done for our university. Thank you for everything you've done for our university. Bob, thank you for everything you've done for our university. Bob, thank you for everything you've done for our university.